In July 25th, 1979, he was born. My first uh, child, my wife, Trisha, and me. And uh, first of all, uh, it was about the most fun type part of my life ever. Uh, you look down there and you see something looking back at you that kind of scary. It looks a little like you. When I got to around 18 months old, he was diagnosed with what is known as cystic fibrosis. And I actually took the x-ray on him. I went to Richardson Medical Center. A good friend of mine who I went to x-ray school with was the head x-ray technician there. And uh, we took a chest x-ray on him. And when I saw the film, I knew he had severe pneumonia, but it was different looking pneumonia. So we took it to the radiologist that worked there, who's a doctor that specialized in reading uh, x-ray film. And he looked at my friend, and I could see he's cutting his eyes like, I can't say this in front of me. I said, doctor, you know, I don't care what you got going here. You can tell me. And he says, well, I want you to take this film, go back to your pediatrician, I'm going to call him. I said, okay. So we went over there and then the pediatrician said, uh, your son may have cystic fibrosis, we're going to put you in Children's Medical Center. Cystic fibrosis is a total body disease that affects the lungs and all uh, glands. Uh, your, uh, your pancreas shuts down, it can't secrete enzymes that your body needs to break down food. So we went on and, and Kobe did real well. Uh, we ended up having our second child, which she tested free of cystic fibrosis. My wife, though, at the beginning did not accept Kobe had anything wrong with him. And so my medical background kicked in, like I gotta step up and do this, once we kinda got her convinced. And she was just, just stubborn and hard-headed, like I can't have a child that's sick. I mean, she, she ran up to the last week, uh, she was running still two miles before she had him and uh, you know out there wobbling around and uh, probably helped him in the long run but it's like well we're, we're too healthy to have a sick child well eventually she figured it out that reality did kick in we do have a uh, child that's sick it's just hard for a mother or a father to admit that you know then we got to know people at the hospital, of course, different diseases. Uh, he would say, hey, Daddy, that's, that's a friend, Leon, over there. He said he's got cancer. He ain't going to have hair in a couple of days. Treatment's going to take him. So we, we're growing up a little bit. We found out, and, and at that time, I was doing part-time x-ray and, and full-time coaching and teaching at Wiley, Texas. And uh, I found out real quick, it's real fun when we win but it's not a big deal when we lose <laughs> because we're fighting a little bit different battle at the house and uh, what the heck, you know, just play when you can. Have the best time you can while we're upright if you can. And uh, I was sitting there and it was freezing cold outside. It was uh, in December of uh, 91. And I'm sitting there and I doze off to sleep. We had the TV on, room's kind of dark. My wife was sleeping in the chair and, and they had already told us to talk to people. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear this voice. And it's Kobe waking up says, can anybody get anything to eat around here? And he'd been in a coma for about three days and people were coming by, seeing him. They thought maybe for the last time, and I go, what? He said, man, I'm about to starve. What are you doing? And I go, what do you want? And so sandwich place across the street, he liked this meatball sub. And I go, I just get up and run. I look at my wife and I get up and I, and I run out. Uh, I was a Presbyterian of Dallas. I run across the street. I get a, across, I go in. It's freezing, it's sleeting. And I have on a short sleeve shirt and sweatpants. And I go in there and these people are just looking at me. I, I don't know if they thought I was homeless or whatever, 
But when I went in there, and the guy goes, can I help you? I said, yeah, I got a son over here at Presbyterian, and he's been out for three days, and, and he woke up and wants a meatball sandwich. This guy puts it together, just gives it to me, and I'm looking for money, and he goes, uh, get out of here. People start applauding, and I'm thinking, hmm, I may go homeless and start trying this more. So anyway, but I do, I get back, he eats it. He had so much steroids, it was fool's gold. But he was up, going around, and the doctor goes, uh, Dr. Claude Prestige at the time says, well, Kobe, you're like Superman. You just keep coming back. We got to Baylor Hospital, he had to have intestinal surgery to unblock something. And uh, he kind of knew that this was the last go round. He was pretty wore out. And uh, one day I said, Kobe, I hate you have to go through all that. He said, that ain't going through nothing. This ain't nothing. People go through stuff a lot worse than this. He told his doctor just a few hours before he died, took his doctor's hands and put them right here. He said, don't worry. And uh, he just went to sleep, didn't wake up. So he always said, I don't want people to forget me. And so I said, I won't let them.